Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Well, during the past while, we've been having a number of videos on the subject of inferiority, intrusive thoughts, transient thoughts, OCD, HOCD, negative thoughts. And we discussed many different aspects of HOCD in specific. And again, we're talking about one gender heterosexuals when they have um, intrusive thoughts uh, suggesting that they are gay or they're living in denial or they're going to be gay or things that is unnatural to them and it is against what they have lived all their lives and now these thoughts have shown up and creating a little bit of a concern uh, in their uh, way they spend their time thinking about these sort of thoughts. And we've discussed uh, different angles and uh, tangents of uh, this topic. And of course, we've uh, put all the links down below in the description of this video about researchers, scientists, psychologists, uh, psychotherapists, uh, about uh, their papers and uh, discoveries that have proven these intrusive thoughts are due to malfunction of part of the brain that it doesn't get the signals correctly back to uh, frontal cortex and then creates these thoughts and images continue and creates this kind of a question in your mind rather than like any uh, normal uh, healthy brain who is not in the glitch of OCD when they get these intrusive thoughts they recognize them it's bothersome they say well, what is that and then they go on but in the case of a uh, OCD and HOCD person it lingers because the, the signaling system malfunctions between frontal cortex, amygdala, and thalamus, and many other components of the brain that it is now proven scientifically that there is a glitch and malfunction that needs to be uh, rewired by uh, the way you treat these thoughts and go on about your business and uh, not paying attention to them while you recognize what they are and call them for what they are the enemy call them for what they're intrusive thoughts thoughts not me thoughts are not me these are OCD not me these are brain brain is not me and when you recognize them that they have nothing to do with you these are thoughts that have popped up without your intervention without your request or awareness and therefore by recognizing and call them for what they are and then going about your business not engaging any data finding any discussions or debating with them and trying to prove or search and find out what why do they say none of that then it will rewire your um, brain through neuroplasticity and then it will learn that these thoughts are irrelevant to you and they will eventually learn that they shouldn't be lingering they shouldn't be showing up and like any normal person normal healthy brain they will show up because it shows up, the intrusive thoughts show up in everybody's mind, everybody's brain in this world, everybody's thought has intrusive thoughts, but then they will uh, disappear. But in an OCD person, it lingers. So we, we, you learn to rewire them to get the, this glitch out and have the caudate nucleus function properly and not get stuck and go back to its automatic way of functioning that would recognize the question is irrelevant as the your inner self your true self will send the signal to the other parts of the brain that this is irrelevant to me and then it shuts out the image and the thought but in the case of OCD people it doesn't shut up that's why you gotta retrain it by your behavior the way you treat these thoughts not getting engaged with them calling them for what they are recognize them that they're intrusive thoughts OCD thoughts not you and then move on about your business until it learns to be minding their own business and going away from your brain. So we've talked about this a lot, which I just talked about it again, <laughs> how to deal with it. But there is also another roots of this whole triggering the HOCD. And that is the question of inferiority that many of us feel that through our life and Sometimes it starts from childhood when some mean kids in school call you some derogatory uh, words or call you names which to you 
that name is derogatory. Uh, and again, we're talking about heterosexuals. So to a heterosexual, uh, calling him gay at any age is an insult and it makes them upset. But when they're children and they're in school age, uh, they could get affected by thinking about it more than an adult would uh, think about it which even the adults should not think about it because we are not supposed to be paying attention to what other people say about us or what thoughts that show up in our head say about us. We're just supposed to be mindful of who we are, what we are, and go about our business and disregard these negative utterings. However, as a child, as a kid in school or high school, we want to be accepted by other kids. We want to, you know, because we are nice people ourselves, most kids, uh, who are uh, who have been bullied all kids all kids have been bullied are good kids nice kids they're kind compassionate normal balanced and they're loved in their families that's why they don't have that feeling of jealousy or need to pick on anybody because they feel good and confident in themselves as a person but the kids who are bullying are the kids who have not been treated well in their home have not been taught manners, love and compassion has not been part of their life, so they feel worthless, and what they do is try to feel a little bit better about themselves, and since they have no other way of making themselves better, by becoming more valuable through their functions and activities and the way they negotiate life, they think if they put somebody else down and make fun of them, that could help them to feel better about themselves. So in fact, the bullies are the ones who have the shortcomings and they're trying to cover that by trying to make fun or put somebody else down because that's the only way they can think they can make anything out of themselves, which is obviously never. They will still remain as miserable as they've always been, which is the motivation of what they do. But these good kids who hear all these uh, negative words and uh, they are just not mean themselves, therefore they take anyone's uh, saying as if it means anything or has any value. So they get affected by it. And because they're children, they ponder on it too long or it sticks in their head and comes and goes that, why did they call me that? Uh, am I gay? Or why did they say that? Do I act gay? Or this and that, so forth. So that could be a trigger that lingers in their mind because they don't focus on the fact that these kids who have called them that, they probably could have all kinds of emotional problems that it is not known to them yet. That's why they're just acting, or they're just mean and stupid, which is <laughs> the most of the cases. So, and for many other reasons, we grow up and we are not feeling as if we are better than everybody else. While we do feel we are on top of the world, we are the um, top dog, but when we see somebody else that we usually think that they're better than us or somehow we feel inferior. So we want to talk about the history of humankind, mankind, and why is this inferiority feeling leads into thinking uh, that we like another guy or feeling inferior toward another guy or somehow having this um, feeling of somebody else is more of a man than I am. Well, since thousands and thousands of years, let's go back to the caveman time when the man comes out of the cave, <laughs> feels very already uh, insecure about many things. One of the things was that somebody else would attack him, try to get whatever he has, food or woman, or whatever he had mustered up for his comfort or uh, survival. So what happens is the security was a question in their mind at the time, physical security. Then they say, okay, if you're attacked, maybe we should team up. So they ask somebody that they weren't attacking them, why don't we team up? If somebody attacks us, then we can withstand their attack. 
So when the other person attacked him, they saw there are two, men, two people here and fend off his attack. So he goes and thinks, well, maybe you know, I should have two people too. So he takes two and the destruction level from one attacking the other goes to two attacking the other. So then they decide, so maybe two is now not enough. Maybe one of them should have three. So one has three, the other's two. And these two will go and get another couple. And then there will be four against three. Then five against four and so on and so forth. Suddenly we have clans against clans, groups against groups. Destruction power goes higher to the point that eventually this security system that they were trying to create backfires and becomes more and more destructive because then power gets more, the more people, the attacks are bigger. Then the nations, the armies are constantly warring to find that security. When this problem of food and all that kind of, and then wild animals and attacks kind of subsided, they still wanted to have that peace of mind. So eventually mankind finds out that psychological security is even more important than the physical security because the physical security eventually came about with uh, supposedly civility that you know human being learned or the laws and rules of societies that were established that kind of a physical uh, attacks and dangers kind of subsided and reduced but still that psychological security that peace of mind that nobody will attack nothing will happen that I will have what I have and I will be able to advance build what I want have security for my family and so on and so forth that peace of mind was the most important one so that's why people eventually try to join groups now that they were not fighting physically but they were trying to create that psychological security by joining syndicates and groups and um, I don't know, clubs and societies in order to feel that they're part of something and they're being uh, protected. Yet by the mere, very fact of becoming part of a group to gain that psychological security, they actually lost that because the group had its own mandate and its own pressures on them to make them behave in a certain way, talk and not talk about certain things. And therefore they lost their own freedom by having joined a group in order to gain that security, psychological security and freedom that they were after. So all of that was about psychological security and physical security all through mankind's history. And still it's not realized because even to this day we can see injustice, we can see problems, we can see physical threats, uh, whether they're real or not real, people are subjected to that and they're still looking for that peace of mind, psychological security. And sometimes they find that in friends and in a group that they belong to. Or if they don't have a group, they start thinking that, oh, that person looks stronger or looks meaner. So it could be a, a, a facilitator of safety or security because that has been in the mankind's mind since thousands of years ago that this is very important and even today uh, there are people uncivilized uh, people who don't abide by the laws and rules and they're arrogant or mean or try to take away the rights of others and infringe on their rights so human beings still feels insecure in many different ways and sometimes we find that in somebody else's presence and that's somebody else's presence for the purpose of security or psychological security could cause one to feel inferior toward that person not because he's interested in that person in a sexual way but is interested in being friend with that person because it feels another person who looks like is stronger or might be an addition to bring security or uh, to be a, a source of protection in some way and that could cause a feeling of inferiority. And this feeling of inferiority could become misunderstood by the person thinking, oh, I'm interested in that person because I'm gay, or my gender is changing, or it's a sexual interest, or it's a sexual inclination. While all along, the whole thing is about psychological security, security, and that is 
one of the reasons that some of us men may feel inferior toward other men and that's not a sexual a feeling or sexual interest it's the inferiority because of a need for security and psychological security hope this was something for you to think about and consider and bring that confidence back in you and understand why you feel the way you do about maybe other males around you and other friends and uh, give you back that the tranquility and peace and balance and confidence in you and move on about your regular life. Hope that was helpful to you and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.